Thomas Keller, you have a different story. Jean Georges and um, Daniel Blu uh, are from France. Uh, I will do my best to talk <laughs> in the French accent. <laughs> We like when you speak a little like that. That was pretty good. Uh, of course, uh, born and raised in, in, in the U.S., and you worked in many places in, in the U.S., but you were always a Francophile, a French lover. You made your way to uh, Paris and uh, worked in some uh, great uh, restaurants like uh, Taiwan. But um, you were still deeply influenced by Chef Bocuse, as we all were. Uh, why don't you talk about that, You're, you're absolutely right, uh, um, Dr. Ryan. It, it, you know, there, there are two things that really inspire awe in me. Um, one of them is actually being here at the Culinary Institute in front of all of, all of you out there. So I want to I thank you and tip my hats to all of the young culinarians who are here today who have chosen the path of cooking. And um, really, it, it makes me feel so proud to, to be here. The other thing that, that brings me to my knees is being around this man. Uh, every time, and, and I've been very fortunate, very lucky in, in my life, and never so much more lucky than to, to have um, Paul, you know, just recognize me in a crowd and say, there, Tomas, come here, I want to talk to you. Um, and it really, it really is a wonderful, a wonderful thing, and I, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, I, I encourage you all, you know, th this is an extraordinary chef that, that's sitting up here today. Uh, who's an extraordinary man uh, who exemplifies what there's so many in the generations that followed him wanted to be. Uh, we wanted to have that s true sense of generosity because that's who we are as cooks. Uh, we're generous. We're generous with, with one another. We're generous with our colleagues. Uh, as Danielle was pointing out, whether it's with his friends and John George was pointing out, or whether it's with, with, his, with his staff. I mean, there's that sense of generosity. And then, of course, a real purpose in nurturing, uh, nurturing everybody around him, as he's done for the past hey, 60 years, 65 years. Uh, he's nurtured us all, and he'll continue to nurture us all, uh, whether, whether he's here or somewhere else. Um, I, I really, really believe that. So, so remember that. Um, somebody who's exemplified what we all want to be as cooks. Your, your question, um, you know, I never worked for, for Chef Bocuz, but uh, it was one of the, I think it was the third cookbook I bought in, in my young career. And so I always feel, I felt a connection uh, to him and, and, and to his, his cuisine and, and to his restaurant and, and to his life. And, and for that, uh, I was very, very thankful. His, his mentor, we talked about, he talked about a little bit, Ferdinand Point. Um, was the second cookbook that, that I received in my young career and reading stories about, about Ferdinand Point and, and about Paul Bocuse uh, in, in that book. And I was very fortunate years ago on a, on a trip back from, from France, Chef Bocuse was on the same flight and I uh, somehow um, finagled my way up to first class because um, I was in coach and of course he was in first class. And uh, I think we were going to Chicago and uh, I, I sat next with him for about an hour, and I asked him to tell me that famous story that I had read so many times about his experience uh, as a young commis at, uh, at Ferdinand Point and the champagne story. And to know that story intimately from reading it so many times and then to have the man who actually the story was written about and with tell me the story, again, was, was just a, 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 an inspiration um, because this is, this is what I wanted to be. It wasn't a career uh, that attracted me to, to this profession. It was the lifestyle, and certainly he exemplified that lifestyle. So thank you, Chef. C'était dans un avion qui revenait et il revenait de nommer meilleur restaurant du monde. Et ça, pour moi, c'était très important. Et le soir, nous avons mangé ensemble au cirque. When I, when I met, when I met uh, Thomas Keller on, on that plane, um, vous reveniez d'être le meilleur chef du monde? Non. Oh. Uh, when I met Thomas Keller on that plane, he had just been named best restaurant of the world. So for me, it was really important. Il y a une chose que je voudrais leur dire que j'ai oublié. There's something I forgot to tell you. That I'd like to say. And please remember, Quand on pense avoir réussi, when you think you've succeeded, déjà a loupé. you've already <laughs> failed. <laughs>
There's one other thing that I think we all have to take really to heart about what Chef Bukus has continuously said here this morning in such a short period of time. He's talked about, about products and about ingredients. When we think about cuisine, I've always, I've always thought about it as a very simple equation. It's about ingredients or products and execution. And certainly the ingredients and the products are coming from our foragers, our fishermen, our gardeners, our farmers, and we really have to support those who bring us those extraordinary products in so many ways and support them in every way that you can. And then certainly, you know, the execution part, and that's about your skill levels and your skill levels that you're learning here today and that you'll continue to hone, you know, through your entire career because skills continuously are, need to be perfected over and over and over again. So when he talks about those very simple things, it's truly the basis of all, of, of all cuisine and all cooking. Jerome Bocuse, uh, you have a completely different perspective from these three gentlemen, uh, because you are the son of, uh, of a legend, the greatest chef in, in history. Uh, what was that like? What was it like growing up, the son of uh, Chef Paul Bocuse? Well, uh, first, you know, I, uh, I didn't care too much about cooking. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, very passionate about sports, and especially uh, sports with uh, high adrenaline, so everything that goes really fast or really high. And, uh, you know, at one point in my life, uh, I went and served in the Army for a year, and uh, where I was a ski instructor. And after that, my father said, well, are you going to finally do something with your life? So I said, well... Uh, yes, let's talk about it. And then, you know, we, he said, well, I've been traveling all over the world. And, you know, I think there is one school. Uh, it's upstate New York. And I haven't seen such a great school. So I will strongly, you know, encourage you to, to attend the school. And so I listen. And, uh, you know, a few months later, uh, CRO and my father brought me up there. And, you know, I didn't think much of it. So started uh, my first day, it was 22 years ago. And um, yeah, I, I had the Bocuse name on my jacket, and, but you know, I didn't really realize before walking in the, in the Grey Hall. And you know, it was basically a family meal, lunchtime. And my group, my class walked in and suddenly a big silent. And everybody turned on me and, they, and said, okay, now, I know what I'm up to here for the next two years, so <laughs> better behave. And, uh, you know, looking back at it, I had a great time. And you were very fortunate to be here. Uh, it was tremendous 22 years ago, and I think it's even better today, and it keeps on getting better. So congratulations, uh, Dr. Ryan, and, uh, you know, take full advantage of what you can get today because you're going to need it. So good luck to all of you. Jerome, uh, Jerome is very modest. You know, he mentioned that he was interested in athletics. Actually, he was a world champion water skier. I'll tell you a real quick uh, story. When um, he decided that he was going to come, and his dad and, and famous restaurateur, Sirio Maccioni, brought him, uh, brought him up here, and, and Jerome decided to attend the, the CIA, we were excited. Paul Bocuse's son was going to come here. So that did put pressure on him. But I was uh, somewhere else, completely unrelated to the CIA, and somehow mentioned that, wow, Paul Bocuse's son's going to come to the CIA to people who weren't from the food industry. And one young woman got really excited. She said, Jerome Bocuse is coming to the CIA? And I'm like, yeah. She says, the Jerome Bocuse? And I said, yeah. Do you know Paul Bocuse? She said, I never heard of Paul Bocuse. Uh, <laughs> but Jerome Bocuse, uh, he's, he's the champion water skier of the world. And I said, it can't be the same guy. I, and she brought in a magazine with Jerome on the, on the front, Water Skiing World Magazine, world champion water skier Jerome Bocuse. So, so Jerome has uh, many talents. Anyhow, moving, moving on, uh, one of the things that um, Paul Bocuse is uh, famous for is being the, the leader of a movement. Uh, a, a dramatic change in cooking that took place starting in the 1960s. You know, we could certainly argue that it began with uh, Fernand Point, but Paul was really the standard bearer, along with a group of chefs that were called the Bande Bocuse, you know, the group of, of, uh, of Bocuse. 
And uh, so that movement was called Nouvelle Cuisine. Uh, and like a lot of movements, you know, in, that, in recent years we've had a modernist cooking or molecular gastronomy. You know, they, those things get abused and, uh, and misused sometimes, but it doesn't mean that in the hands of the right people they aren't significant and important. Anyhow, with uh, that said, Jean-Georges, you yes. worked with three of the greatest practitioners of Nouvelle Cuisine, uh, uh, Monsieur Haberlane, Yes. at a restaurant in Alsace called L'Auberge Dill, uh, Chef Bocuse, and then Louis Otier, who had a fabulous restaurant in uh, the Riviera in, in France. So Jean-Georges, and then I'd, I'd like everybody just talk about, you know, what was Nouvelle Cuisine? How was it a departure? Why was it different? And, you know, why was it important? Why do we still talk about it today? I think, you know, I work for two chefs, uh, Chef Paul Bocuse and Chef Louis Otier, who were both disciples, they were both like, uh, you know, like uh, apprentices from Fernand Point. So they took whatever they learned from Fernand Point and really had their personal touches. You know, I think uh, Mr. Chef Bocuse, living in Lyon, in the areas, uh, same area as Fernand Point, really, I think, developed his own personal. I think, I think today it's about lear learning the fundamentals, like you're learning in school today, you know, the techniques and everything. And then I believe that, we, you know, every individual has his own. Uh, Cuisine becomes personal. You know, I think uh, Mr. Bocuse really had these personal uh, flavors and cooking and beliefs and uh, working with the market. Louis Routier, same thing, you know, working with the inner side of France with the uh, Provencal cuisine. So I think, you know, the three of us are, are similar techniques, you know, right. learning from our, from, our, from our fathers. But on the end, we really developed, uh, we developed personal, personal uh, cuisines, you know. So I think going from Nouvelle, nouvelle Cuisines that those chefs developed, I took everything I could get from uh, those three, uh, three star Michelin chefs and I really started traveling and developed my own uh, cooking. So I went from Nouvelle Cuisine to, what was after Nouvelle Cuisine? <laughs> Fusion, Global, whatever it was called at the time. And then we went to Molecular and et cetera, et cetera. So, but I think, I believe the future of uh, the food is really cooked with where, where you are, I think Thomas is a great example of what of that uh, says, you know, really cook with you, what's around you, you know. I think the farm to table today is really big. So I'm really learning what I learned from uh, Paul Bocuse, Louis Routier, is really whatever was around there, going to the market, cooking from there, with the soul, the passion, but on the end, pleasing the customer as well. Because like Mr. Bocuse said before, if you, if you don't please the customer, you have no customer, you have no business, you have no... So I think you have to be in sync of what's, you know, opening a restaurant is not that simple, but on the end you have to really be in sync of what uh, people want as well. And if I go to the south of France, I want to really have some Provencal flavor. I go to Lyon, I want some, some Lyonnais uh, influence. I go to Alsace, I want some cabbage, sauerkraut, foie gras. If I go to Thailand, I want some, you know, some, I think... After that, uh, you create your own, you know. And me traveling in Asia for five years, I create uh, kind of my own uh, flavors and philosophy and things that you want to. You know? Absolutely. So. Daniel? Well, uh, <laughs> I think Nouvelle Cuisine was uh, certainly a big change in France. And Paul was uh, one of the leading persons, especially on the early days, and uh, Chef Paul Bocuse. And um, what was interesting, at the time, and I think we all have the question, uh, what is the future of French cuisine? What's happening with French cuisine? It was the same thing who happened in the late 60s and the 70s during Nouvelle Cuisine, is that within one cuisine, there was so much diversity. There was so much different, I mean, there was, there was more uh, precise style, an individual style per chef versus, um, before Nouvelle Cuisine, we, things were much more standardized, and basically restaurants were practicing the same technique, practicing the same kind of food. That codified? Uh, codified a little bit. And Nouvelle Cuisine broke down all those codes. And I think never stop breaking the code, except the code got out of the, out of the borders and into the world, and, and has certainly influenced creativity and has influenced much more than Japanese cuisine, which was 
refined, codified, but remained quite classic for a long, long time, much longer than French cuisine. And, and uh, I think the, um, I remember Nouvelle Cuisine, you take Alain Sandorans in Paris, Michel Guerrard in the South of West, Paul Bocuse in Lyon, Roger Verger in South of France. I mean, wherever you were going, there were a different style of cooking, different style of cuisine, different regional influence, um, local, regional influence, but also global influence coming in. Um, every time a great chef was taking a trip to Asia or a trip to South America uh, and all that, they were bringing something, an aspiration, a technique, uh, uh, an ingredient, a combination. And I think that what made uh, what we call Nouvelle Cuisine. So out of that, a lot of mistake fell. Also, a lot of mistakes happened because chefs were going too far with their creativity <laughs> and made some mistakes. But that's not what r remained from that. Today, 30 years later, 40, uh, 40 years later, because it's 40 years old now, Nouvelle Cuisine in France, 40 years later, you still go to Michel Guerard and he's an aspiration. And is, he has inspired maybe three generations of chefs already. And he still inspires them. And uh, the young chef in France, uh, of course, uh, the economy sometimes don't play in favor of the chef. But the young chef in France, there is an amazing pool of young talent who are maybe a little bit more open mind, but really are looking closely and back at French cuisine and are trying to continue to evolve with it. And that's the hardest, to be able to evolve with one cuisine and continue to, to be creative and continue to... Um, to, inno to innovate with, within staying focused with one cuisine. And I think uh, French cuisine has the chance to be able to stay center and yet pull wide as well. Thomas? Can you repeat that? <laughs> it pulls so wide that even Thomas Keller gets it. Need a summary, please. Um, <laughs> Very difficult. I mean, it's a hard question, uh, Dr. Ryan. First, I want to thank you for, for inviting me here today. It's really an honor to be sitting next to really two of my closest friends, three of my closest friends, you know, Jean-Georges, Daniel, and, and Jerome. So thank you for, thank you. for allowing me to be sitting up here today. Um, it's, a, it's a real pleasure. Um, I also want to thank you for using the word movement. I think that's an important thing as opposed mm -hmm. to the word trend. Um, and, and it's something that I, I want you all to think about because, you, you know, if you look at the definition of a trend, and we talk about trends in so many different ways today, and everybody asks, well, what's the next trend? And it's like, don't ever become part of a trend. Trend has a beginning and an end, okay? You want to be part of a movement. A movement makes a difference. A movement has an impact. And so when we talk about a movement, uh, as Dr. Ryan asked the question, we're really talking about something uh, as it relates to, to Chef Bocuse and those of his, his generation, which, which brings up another topic. And you think about Nouvelle Cuisine. And you think about Nouvelle Cuisine and why was it called Nouvelle Cuisine? And I think Chef Bocuse and certainly Dr. Ryan knows this, everybody at the table, many of you know that uh, it was coined by the media. You know, it wasn't something that Chef Bocuse loved uh, <laughs> as a term. The same way as, as a molecular gastronomy is not something that Ferran or, 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 or Heston or Grant Ackett's ever really embraced. It was a definition that the media define for us or for, or for the general public so they can, they can understand what they were talking about in a, in a short definition. Um, but generational is, is very important because as we realize generations, each generation has, everything is new. Each generation has new art. Each generation has new fashion. Each generation has new music. Uh, each generation has a different point of view, but those point of views are all based on the classic before it. And so when you think about what Chef Bocuse and, and, and his, his colleagues, his com comrades did, they, they didn't start something that they, didn't know some, that they didn't know anything about. I mean, they had a real strong education and were deep rooted in understanding what classic French cuisine was all about. That gave them the platform to develop their point of view in a new generation, with a new generational, with a new generational um, um, Mantra. So their, new, their, their cuisine became something that, as Jean-Georges pointed out, and it's very historic what you think about it, which happened very quickly, Jean-Georges pointed out what she called, you know, personality cuisine. And I, I truly understand that because today 
you're not talking about French cuisine necessarily. You're not talking about necessarily Italian or Japanese. You're talking about personality cuisine. So there's, there's Jean Georges cuisine, there's Danielle's cuisine, Alain Ducasse's cuisine, uh, Pierre Gagné's cuisine. Everybody is talked about as a personality and their point of view about what their cuisine is all about, where pre-Paul Bocuse, everything was pretty codified and standardized. Everybody knew how to make Sol Veronique. What made one Sol Veronique better than the other? Just what I was talking about earlier, getting the better product and being able to execute it better. That's what, that's what, that's what ranked those great chefs and those great restaurants was their ability to get the better product and execute the recipe better. When Paul Bocuse came along, new generation, saw a new opportunity, developed a new point of view and set really the standard and the movement for all of us into the future. Every generation now we understand has a different point of view and is able to express that point of view in whatever they want. Cuisine was something that certainly in our country wasn't very important, can we say? So what made, what made us be aware, really aware of French cuisine? Where did that come from for us? That was our first real exposure to great food. We all know French is the greatest country as it, as it relates to food in the world. It always has been. Um, you know, certainly you can look back at the Kennedy administration when they hired René Verdon as their, as their chef. We, all, we only have to look back in history to understand where, where these things began. The, 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 the media awareness of food uh, really spurred the interest from so many different people. Chef Bocuse, the band of Bocuse was in the right place at the right time, with the, embraced the opportunity and, and really made an impact in the world. It's something that we still feel today and something that we have to build from. Yeah. George, George wants to I jump in. I want to add something as well because I, I started cooking in 1973 and I believe that Nouvelle Cuisine is really where cuisine was all served on platters. Everything was on platters. Big trays, everything was served whole, carved the chicken at the table, carved the rack of lamb. So most of the food was really on platters coming to the dining room. And I think Nouvelle Cuisine, maybe it's a question for Mr. Bocuse, Chef Bocuse is really I think the Japanese maybe influence was there to put everything from a platter to the plates. Everything was served from a platter, completely changed it to a plate, presented on a plate, size on a plate. And I feel like we have a whole tune around now. People want flavor back into the dining room, so it looks like we're serving back now. People want to see a chicken and they want to smell it. Because I feel when you, when you start plating things in the kitchen, we have all the smells in the kitchen, but the customer is losing 50% of the, the expense, a little bit. So for the last, I think, 25, 30 years, a lot of that classic cuisine went to Nouvelle from platter to plates. So we lost a little bit of the smell. And it looks like we're going back now to more fragrance, more plate, more carving, more mm -hmm. sourcing at the table. And uh, I think we're going back a little bit in a way. Yeah. With That's new true. techniques and, of course, new flavors, new ingredients, yeah. but new combinations. But I think uh, yeah. for, for me, the tune of Nouvelle Cuisine was really from platter to plate. Yeah, that was one of the big innovations. Uh, Jean? Yeah. I, um, I'm going to share my experience and how I see it. Uh, we are in Epcot, and uh, Epcot uh, is in Florida where we, we serve uh, roughly uh, 1,500 uh, guests every day. A lot of those guests, uh, they are you know, they're coming from deep uh, in America. They've never been outside of the country, and they've never been to Europe. And they probably never been to a big city, and uh, for some of them, it's the first time out of the state. So they come to Disney after saving uh, for several years, and they make the trip of their life, and they, they come to the French restaurant. So now, you know, for the first time in their life, they are exposed to, uh, to a new cuisine, to a new culture. Uh, you know, I'm sure they've never tried a snail before, and, uh, and they're here and they're willing to experience. And for me, and for us, our biggest reward is when they leave the restaurant with a big smile and, you know, f for them, they, I don't know, they, 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 they felt they appreciate what they had and we felt that, you know, we truly represent our country and deliver what we should be delivering to them. So, to me, it's very rewarding to, uh, to see that on an everyday basis. So.